we're making a video of Zach fixing his hair right here. This is <laughs> gotta get the hair right. Gotta Lindsay comes hair in, right. hair's perfect. I don't know. Definitely my not. hair. Definitely not it's that. A mess. But headphone hair is always a good excuse. Always a good excuse. Always a good excuse. All right, let's get to work. Let's, let's get to let's work. Let's do this. Lindsay thing. and I were just in Australia together. We were. Here's, here's why I understand about any of you artists to go over to Australia. Okay. okay. I go over to Australia. Yep. Is this mic placement okay? I go over to Australia and I am so jet lagged, I cannot even function all yeah. week. Like the whole week, it got better, but I was still like pretty screwed up. Yeah. Is the, oh the computers in the shot? Oh the we're having mic adjustment. Oh fan, this a, we're pros. Everyone here is hey. a pro. Um, I go over to Australia. I'm screwed up. Yep. The jet lag's killing me. Yep. All these artists, like Breland, for example, he showed up like two days before. Two days later, he's like on stage. Yeah. In front of like ten thousand people. Mm -hmm. I think you were in town for a minute longer. But don't you just get complete, like, how do you perform on the other side of the world you with, know, like, Isn't it weird? Or is it not that weird? The yeah, it definitely up? is weird. And you're f so exhausted, but it's just what you need to do, you know? Like, as yeah. an artist, when you know you signed up for this job, it is par for the course. And so there's most of my European tours, we've done, like, seven European tours now. Most of them you fly in day of. So you land at, like, 8 a.m. or 10 a.m. or something, and you were playing a show that night. And yeah. it's just, like... Yeah, you're so tired. And Australia, thankfully, because it's such a, you know, 180 degree whirlwind, um, I did fly in a few days early, which was like super, super helpful. But you, you always kind of still feel But just because it's what you signed up off. for doesn't mean that that's like, uh, that, that you're able to power through it. Like, is it no. the adrenaline in the crowd that pushes you through? Definitely the adrenaline. Even just like the adrenaline of like knowing the excitement's coming, you know, and knowing that I get to play a show that's like my favorite out of everything that I do. That's my favorite thing to do in the world. That's the one thing. And so, yeah, getting on stage is just like the minute you hear everybody screaming and the lights go down. I'm like, all right, game on. Baby. Let's go. Game Let's on. Go. I'm experiencing this now because I'm on the road and it sucks for like I used to, I've heard you say this in a million interviews. Yeah. But everyone says this. It sucks for 23 hours and yep. for one hour. It's great. Yep you're on stage and kind of makes the whole thing worth it but everything else is kind of a freaking bummer isn't it i agree but i think it's also about looking at it as make those 23 hours of the day the best they can be yeah. however that can happen you know and and i've become i mean i really say we travel for a living and then we just get to play shows as a hobby because it's like mainly our that, job. That's what everyone says. Yeah, is like that's traveling because like... we just do so much of it. But there's ways that you can make it easier on you, you know, like traveling with eye masks and good headphones and, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, getting sleep where you can and like bringing little things with you in a hotel room that make it feel like home, like whether that's a candle or a diffuser or I don't know. I always bring a book on the road and, yeah. I, and I swear every time I go on the road, I bring a book and I go, I Dude. swear I'm going to finish this book on the road. Yeah. And I never even open it. Me I never, either. Does that happen to you too? I have Why do we even bring the books? bringing books I now always because... Go, even I'm like, gonna have plenty of time. I'm gonna read the whole yeah. book. And you, you never read it on international flights for sure. I bring like two or three books because I'm too. like I'm gonna have all this time. I'm gonna be me, sitting on a plane being like too. I wish I would have brought my book, but it never happens. You never open the book once. However, the hack now I have found at least for me is audiobooks. Like I read books yeah. so fast because I listen to them at double speed. Yeah, me too. And D when I'm like running or walking or out shopping or whatever. And so I read so many books now, but I, I guess I technically listen to books. But but yeah, no, I read me, a lot. Me, me too. I'll, I'll listen to anything. Like I'll listen to a podcast for yeah. two hours, whatever. But I always bring these physical books with me and I go, totally. if, uh, it never happens. So, okay, wait. So in Australia, Brad called you up and you did Whiskey Lullaby together. Yeah. And you guys had done this a million times when you were on the road with him. Mm -hmm. But when he calls you up, he he was kind of hanging on his bus. He showed up right before he went on and then he walked on and he played. So did you guys run through it or no? No. I mean, we toured with Brad for like a year and a half. And so Brad you know is like what's up. You know an what... older brother to me almost. Yeah. However, I haven't seen him in years. Yeah. And the first time I saw him was on stage because, you know, he is he's busy getting ready for a show. And so right. I didn't want to bug him like before he went on stage. And so I, I just watched the show and then he called me out and he's like, hey, how's it going? And, and I'm like, hey, how's it going? someone from Brad's team come to you and say, hey, Brad wants you to do Whiskey Lullaby? For him, or does he so text we, you? So we were ended up texting early on in the day and being like, oh my gosh, we're playing the same festival. Amazing, amazing. And he just texted me, want to do whiskey? And I was like, yes, I would love to. And um, and so we, when we were on tour, we had figured out this like really cool electric guitar, like dueling electric guitar solo and like guitar mini at its finest. And um, and he was like, but I just played on acoustic. And I'm like, great, because I would have had to go back and study like what we did. But um, but yeah, it's it's always it's just like riding a bike, you know. 
Right. You go back. You you just get your guitar. You go out there, and you just you just kind of wing, you winged it. You just kind of winged I it. I mean, a bit. but but songs like Whiskey Lullaby are so iconic, and yeah. you know, I think they're in, entrenched in our brains as you know listeners who have have been a fan of of country music for sure but um you know uh, and being on tour with Brad for a year and a half i mean i've heard that song and sang that song so many times it so it comes quick yeah i can yeah. i can do it in my sleep it's just such a hit when you play with a band like Corey Wong's band like yeah. you just had a single with Corey Wong uh every time i'm looking at at you yeah when you play are you comfortable playing with that band or is that a little bit outside your comfort zone I will say it is my favorite thing to walk on stage with a band in in the caliber of what Corey Wong's band are. They're all just such incredible musicians. The first time I felt that, actually, I remember I was 18 years old. I was on tour with Buddy Guy. Yeah. Like, Buddy Guy, if people don't know who he is, he's like blues a, pioneer, a legend, legend yeah. guitar player. And um, we were opening up for him. I was playing at a trio at the time. And I remember he invited me out on stage. I had no idea he was going to call me out. And he was like, Lindsay, um, we're in G. And that was the only thing he said. And I, like, walked out on stage. And I was just this, like, short little blonde Canadian at the time. And um, and his band started. And all of a sudden, I just became a different player. Like, I just became a different musician. Because there, there's... I don't know, a different foundation that you can walk on as a musician that it just gives you inspiration. It gives you courage to go into places of your creativity that you wouldn't normally go. Yeah. And I definitely felt like that with Corey Wong. Corey and I became friends throughout the pandemic. Um, He was coming here to write a lot, working on his next record. And so we just got together and, and... wrote a bunch of songs and um, obviously are both guitar nerds in our own right. And um, he's just so good. Like Corey plays perfectly. I always, I always give Brad heck for like, you know, never making a mistake. Like he can play a whole entire show and never, he never flubs anything. Never, never flubs never. anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Corey Wong, man, you also. can like record Corey and he is like perfectly quantized. Like he is like perfect. That's what I was going to bring up. It is so annoying and it's so amazing yeah. to watch. And so, Playing next to Corey Wong, I'm like, I better step it up because he is perfect. Like, he plays like. So does his band, too, I feel like. I, I feel like the whole band is like. They're so in good. In perfect time. It's weird. It almost sounds like you almost want it to, like, not be in perfect time. It's almost too perfect. Oh, my God. Not to me. It's, it's just, it has so much soul in it. And, and then it allows me to, like, kind of dance on top of it. So, guitar-wise, I lock in as much as I can to Corey. What does he bring to the writer's room? Is it the sense of melody and guitar playing? And then on that song, were you mostly contributing lyrics? Or is Corey, like, a sneaky, lyrical guy? Like, is he bringing <laughs> lyrical content to the room? He does a bit of everything, but I remember every time I look at you when we started, um, he he had like a little melody idea from from the get go and and had like a couple guitar licks and that's usually where I start writing too so yeah. we definitely um, kind of were on the same page in that in that point and it was just such a jam that I just started singing every time I look at you and and I was just like okay this is this is something and yeah. now like a lot of my friends have been like this is my favorite song you've ever recorded because I just, actually I love it oh, I, I've listened you. to it you said to him because you were on his podcast yeah and you said to him something interesting because I've always heard Corey say that he's like a lead rhythm guitar player yeah and I've always kind of accepted that yeah and then you said to him you were like don't say that you're so much more he is than a lead rhythm guitar player is that but I almost think that's like um like I almost think that's like a cool thing. Is, is that do you think that's him like being being on himself a little bit? Being down on himself? Uh, yeah, I mean I think that Corey because he is so great. Yeah, I think that we're all as musicians we're hard on ourselves. And yeah. I think Corey is definitely hard on himself. And when he says he's like a lead rhythm guitar player is that how he says it? Yeah, that um, that's what he says. I'm like that is no, that's a little crap is what that You're is. You're just uh yeah. Cuz I've seen Corey play and he can like dig in, man. He can play incredible things, but I also so respect a musician that knows how to sit in the pocket. And if anything, like find something cool and then stays there. Like there is a there is a beautiful ceremony around that place of like finding like then uh, 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 uh. Yeah. Uh, 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 and like living there. And when you watch him play with Volpeck, his band, which if anybody has not heard oh, of Volpeck, they're, they're please go watch they're, them. They're, like, they're please insane. do yourself a favor. They're so insane. And Corey just finds these little parts that like Volpeck wouldn't be who they are without Corey's playing. And so he can go off. Like, yeah. let me just say, put it, put it on the record right now that he could totally go off. But he chooses a lot 
of time not to, which I so, so respect. Have you dived into, because you're obviously an amazing guitar player. I feel like if I came across Corey Wong when I was younger, I would have put so much time into studying that technique. Yeah. Now I've just decided I'm never going to become, like, I'm, <laughs> like, I just don't even touch it. I'm like, I can't even dive into whatever that, I don't even know what that is. Do you yeah. dive into that at all? Do you go, man, I'd love to be able to play some of that syncopated yeah. 16th note funk stuff or do you kind of just say I'll leave that to Corey Wong I love funk music so much yeah. like it is what inspires me almost the most right now from a playing perspective and so yeah I love to dive into it I don't practice as much as I used to when I was a little girl when I was playing guitar in my bedroom for eight hours a day like that, I just don't have eight hours a day to practice I right would have been now. practicing Corey Wong if right, I were at that exactly. age exactly yeah. and, and I remember I was playing like at that time I was playing like Tommy Manuel and Stevie Ray Vaughan and Jimi Hendrix yeah. and Eric Clapton and and so, yeah, now if I get if I get time to practice, I will definitely step into that stuff. That stuff's unreal. So, okay, wait. So Lindsay's not here for her health. Mm-hmm. There's so much going on. There's the, there, there's a new show that, that you were just on. Yeah. Which is uh, uh, American Anthems yeah. on PBS. Mm-hmm. And I just watched this recently. You did. Yeah, it Thank was really you for watching. It was really touching. So it, basically the show goes around to these ordinary – ordinary might not be the right word, but to these people – who are, are ordinary people who have done something extraordinary? Yeah, these been regular humans these that from like humans. walking on the street, looking at them, you'd be like, "That's a human being," and then you get to really meet them right. throughout each episode. Each episode um, features a, a new hero and a new artist, and so they pair up an artist with a hero, and you get to meet these. I met Greta was my hero, Greta McLean. She was She's a retired incredible. police officer. Yes. And, and yeah, so they team you up with her and, and you guys meet for the, and is there any context about? There's not really context, but the show, of course, is very smart of teaming up each artist right. with a hero that maybe relates to their own story or you have common ground somehow. Um, Greta McLean's story, she's just incredible. She actually worked as a cop in the sexual harassment unit. And then shortly after she retired, she was assaulted and raped and um, herself and my story as a survivor I came out with my story a few years ago um, when I wrote the song make you off my last record and so getting to meet her and just getting to talk about both of our stories and and our experiences and and me starting my own foundation and her starting her own foundation she started this foundation called silent no longer and just wants to be an advocate for other survivors and helping them find healing and helping them find growth and she just is such a beautiful human being and so the show is such a cool idea because it teams up an artist with with, you know what looks like a regular human being and then you get to know them and you're just your heart is like pouring out for them and then at the end of the episode it's like I, I'm gonna surprise Greta and her friends with a show and what she doesn't know is I wrote a song for her in the episode nobody knows this this is the concept of the show this I yes. think this happens in every episode it does but she didn't know because the she show had no idea she, she didn't know she just thought I was gonna go play a couple songs for her friends. you said to her you were like gather some friends and let, yes. let and gather yeah. some friends and yeah, let yeah. me play a couple songs for yeah. you yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we'll celebrate just being a part of this TV show. It's yeah. amazing. So she thought that was the end of the deal. And then she I. She thought it was all about Lindsay. I mean, she, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When it's like, no, 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 Greta, this is all about you. We're flipping you. it on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, it. right. And um, and so, yeah, I called my friend Christian Bush because we worked on my first record together. I've written with him for years. And so we wrote a song for Greta about her story. It's called Let the Words Come Out. And then play it live on the episode. So this all happens in the course of like hours. Yeah. And um, and she was so touched. She was crying on camera. And I like signed my guitar and gave it to her. And it was just a beautiful moment. And then... The whole season airs, and PBS loved our song so much. They were like, this song is so special from the season. It's just one of our favorites, and we really want to release it. And I was like, really? We, we want to release it? And, she, and they were like, yeah, I think it's amazing how it can just – empower people to shine light on their own stories and know how much how much you know light that can give you when you do that and so um so we released it and we're actually going it, it's under consideration for a grammy which is insane i was reading that in the press release that which it, is so crazy are you gonna play this have you played this live yet did you, you i have played it live did you it, play this in australia um no, no i didn't play it in australia i should have played it in australia you should have played it in australia is that are next you gonna, show you're at I will play it for you. Just when I own, when am I going to be at another? I mean, never say never. We just followed each other across the world. No, I think I'm going to be at another Lindsay L show, guaranteed. I just don't know if I want to wait that long for this song to enter the set. 
Well, we can. Uh, I can. I can. I can make that happen. Actually, we have a few shows next week. So. Oh, okay. Are you gonna do it full band? Because it's, it's sort of stripped down the recording. So yeah. So on the show, Christian and I just played it for her and her yeah, friends, yeah. and we and we decided to release the recording from the episode because that's what just makes it so special. Right. But um. But yeah, I actually think I'm gonna produce a full version of it. Yeah. And, yeah. I think when you I should. would play it with my band, it would be, be full band. It'd be full band. You know what killed me about that episode that was just so emotional was when she said that she thought she should have been able to fight off her attacker because she was a retired policeman and that that's a part of what kind of ate her up inside. It's so true. The story was so emotional to listen to. It was actually really, like, I think everybody has to go and watch this series and has to watch this episode especially. Yeah, they really need to go look at American Anthems. I mean, so many incredible artists, Jennifer Nettles and Lee Bryce and Cam, all just work with incredible people. But yeah, Greta McLean's story is really, really inspiring. This is a cool show. Thank you. I, I think people have to go watch and they have to listen to the song and check it out. And Lindsay's on another show as well. Yeah. Canada's Got Talent. Yeah. Hosting it. So I, I wanted to talk to you about this because you golden buzzard the winner of, <laughs> I mean, of Canada's Got Talent. What can I say? But here's here's what I here's what I need to bring up, Lindsay. Okay. okay? Here's yeah. here's what I want to talk mm-hmm. about. You really claim this because you've really done this, but I feel like everybody in the room was like undeniable this one was amazing and then you run up and golden buzz you're like mine right didn't you kind of claim it okay, before anyone thing. else could here's the thing so in canada's got talent first off it's amazing hosting a tv show it's always been something i've wanted to do and yeah. like music is always my first and foremost love but it's just been so much fun to be, this is to be cool on TV. you're really great in this Thank this you. is you're really so cool sweet. you're yeah, really yeah. great at being a podcast host oh um my God. And but I will say, okay, Janique Fournier is her yeah. name. And she walks on stage. And let me let me just set the world straight here. That yeah. like golden buzzers bring them right through to the semifinals. So there are a lot of people in oh. auditions who get four yeses. Like there was no question she was gonna get four yeses because she was amazing. I didn't but, realize that that's the power of the golden buzzer. But the golden buzzer puts them like guarantees them a spot in the next yeah. round. And just certain people deserve that moment you know deserve that moment of having like gold confetti falling on them and you know and so when I met Janique Fournier I was told a little bit about her story and then as the host I pre-interview everybody before they walk out on stage and the last person they talk to before they go out on stage and I'm the first person they talk to when they come off so sometimes if the performance goes great it's an amazing job and sometimes the performance doesn't go great it's a really difficult job but Janique was amazing and she comes up and has like frizzy hair sort of like Susan Boyle. Do you remember Susan Boyle? Yeah, this is kind of the Susan Boyle moment. It is. And she sings I Dream a Dream and everyone goes insane. Everyone goes insane. This was like Canada's Susan Boyle moment. It totally was like Canada's Susan Boyle. But But the part that even made it more special is she's a palliative care nurse. She adopted two children with Down syndrome. She just emits light like she is talking to you she speaks en français she speaks in french and knows a little bit of english uh on petit peu i took seven years of french and i know how to say like dog like like nothing christmas tree yeah like i mean i took spanish i can't can't say yeah i know i can understand it a lot more than i can speak it but um but janique was just so amazing and, and she was like such a beautiful person inside and out and then you close your eyes and she walks out on stage and it honest to god sounds like you're listening to celine dion Oh my gosh, like, she was incredible. She sounded like Celine Dion. And I was like, this woman deserves a moment on the show. Like, I don't even, who knows who's going to win? Who knows whatever? And at that point, none of the, when we were shooting auditions, none of the judges had hit the golden buzzer. And we were all sort of like waiting. Does, it, does everybody out. only get one golden buzzer? Everyone only gets one golden buzzer. But, but there, so there are five through, that can be pressed. Yes. And nobody's pressed one yet. And nobody had pressed one yet. And everybody was sort of like, well, you don't want to hit it too early. No. What if something amazing is coming? But Janique was just so special that I was like, I need to I need to do it. I guess I'll be the first one, which I didn't and want to be. you walked across the stage. I walked across the down stage. Down the steps. Interrupted everybody down the steps and was like, Janique, I believe in you. I believe in your story. You're such a beautiful human. I choose you. And like pressed the golden buzzer. And she was so sweet. She had like her arms up in the sky and she was like circling around and she was crying. It was such a beautiful moment. Were you moment. worried that someone might have pressed it before you got the chance? Did you have to walk briskly to that golden buzzer? Not really actually, because it? I think all of us were like waiting. We didn't want to press it too early. And I was just like, no, this is too special. This moment needs to be. Anyone else go on after they went, oh shoot, maybe I should have all. I mean, it. yeah, it was so funny. Actually, a few <laughs> a few acts later, Howie pressed his golden buzzer. Howie Mandel was like, yeah, 
we need to we need to press some golden buzzers. That's there. the one. Yeah. Right. So when you do this, because I've always wondered about this. So the people show up, the guests, or I guess the talent mm-hmm. show up. And do you have any pre-interview or anything, or you have no idea who they are? They don't give you anything. I have no idea. You have no idea. So they show up, and then what do you what do you ask them? It depends. Like sometimes they'll be like, "Okay, Zach is coming on. He is performing a world record." And that's all they will tell me. Yeah. And so, because they want naturally me to like pull story from somebody or like discover, you know, that their dad is here supporting them and their dad was the, did the same thing when they were, you know, they want me to naturally find these things. So, um, so I'm usually given their name and like one piece of information of what they're doing or they are a dancer. Like it's very vague. Yeah. But, but that's the beauty of it. You know, it's like happy accidents of what happens on camera. So you pull the stories out and they go on. Mm-hmm. And then, and then afterwards, what is your role afterwards to basically just summarize the experience that they yeah. had on the show? Like I try to be their best friend. So if they got four yeses, we're celebrating. It's like, oh my gosh, this is amazing! Oh my god, we'll mom. see you in semifinals, mom, come here! Like Whoa. it's just a very happy moment. Yeah. If they get four no's. Or like if they get buzzed off, if they get four buzzers. Oh my god, what do you do? Then? It is so hard. Like like I remember last season, these these people would just come and their head was hanging and they were defeated. They were so sad, and it it's just like, I'm so sorry. You know, you did. I'm proud of you. Like better luck next time. And and I granted, I know what that feels like as a performer to have an amazing show, and I know what it also feels like to have a show that nothing went right. Yeah. And so I can kind of see eye to eye with them, but it is it is hard, man. There were a few acts last season that I was just like, like because you know, you just know the feeling in the room. It just didn't go as they wanted it to. I just to. think you have to brush that. You just have to say, "Sorry, bro." <laughs> Yeah, it's you okay. Gotta, you gotta get out of here. You're giving me a bad energy. You're done. <laughs> I know. Move I, along. I mean, sometimes I need to, but I also want to be that consoling, you know, empathetic. Like, it's okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. One time I was, you know, exactly not that talented. Yeah, but we all, and then I turned seven or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Like, <laughs> we all mess up from time to time. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. It's fine. This is I, this is really. Is there a moment where you guys ever hang with like? Do you and Howie uh, Howie ever hang? Yeah, all or, the time. Really? Me and the judges are um, our friends. We have like this group text that we text all the time. He's sixty seven. Doesn't he look unbelievable? Howie Mandel looks unbelievable, but he also is just the funniest dude. He's like, hilarious. Right? He is who he is on camera every day. Like who backstage, he is like cracking jokes. When you were he was you were on his podcast, I think. Yeah. And he called someone. Was it was it a random was that a random number or was it someone related to you? Okay, so Howie will do this on his on his podcast. He will just call random numbers. He yeah. will literally pick up the phone and dial <laughs> nine or ten random numbers. And and then just see what happens, and then ask them a random question. <laughs> so we ended up getting this woman from um, Canada, actually, yeah. where I where I am originally from. I'm from Calgary, but we ended up getting this woman from a city in in Canada called Regina. He was he was like five years old with this yes. with this city called Regina. He couldn't get over it. Yeah, he was so exactly. thrilled about this city being yeah. named Regina because the slogan of Regina is the city that rhymes with fun. Yeah, right. And he just couldn't get over it. And so he was asking this poor woman all these questions. And she was kind of laughing and also being like, is this real? Is this a prank call? And so it's just so funny what he does on his podcast. It's she was great because she was like, I don't want to talk to you. And then she opened up and then she like and then she started just spilling everything about her life. It was life. incredible. Yeah, no, it was, it was really funny. So okay. maybe we should add this into your podcast. I was actually kind of I was okay. I was thinking about I don't know if we should really do it. Should we randomly call someone or not? I, I don't I, I don't, don't know. I mean, so there's intense. like there's there's rules you need to like ask permission that they are cool with it or something. I actually really wanted to do it, but I was maybe we'll do it at the end. So okay. if it derails the whole thing, <laughs> we'll just say that's it. We're done. Walk out. Um, okay, wait. So the show's happening. Season it, it's all shot live, right? It's um or we it... we shoot the auditions because then we need to like pick the winners and then we shoot semifinals and then we pick the finalists and then we shoot finals. So the so, new season is this starts October. So the uh, new season we start shooting in a couple weeks. Oh, you start shooting in a couple weeks. And then we'll shoot semifinals in January and then um it all starts airing and the finals, the finale is live. Okay. And last year Simon Cowell flew up for our finale which was amazing. Oh my god, nice guy. 
such a nice guy. Really? Such a nice guy. Such a fascinating guy. Like, yeah. he's done TV for so long. And so all of us were just, like, picking his brain. And he was so cool and, like, so generous with his time. And the coolest thing about it is um, Trish, one of the judges, was like, hey, Simon, do you want to get added to our group chat? You know, our group group text? And um, and he was like, I actually don't have a cell phone. And what? we were like, what? You're Simon Cowell. How do you not have a cell phone? And he was like, I, a few years ago, it was just controlling my life. And um, I, I just needed a break from it. So he turned it off for a week. And a week turned into a month. And a month turned into a year. And now that was like five years ago or something. And I'm like, How do you get that is amazing. That? Well, he has enough people around him all the time that he's surrounded by, so you know, you, whoever. Don't you ever think about that? Like, I think if I, I could. Really do. If I could ditch social media and oh not feel. Oh, my gosh. I would have so much time. And not and feel so time. like like a bigger loser for ditching it yes. than I am for having it. Like be amazing. Wouldn't that be great? It'd be amazing. How how do you get to that level? Some I people like some people are at that level where they just don't even bother and like and, it, and it's like doesn't even matter. That's so crazy. That's horrible. Okay, so America's got or excuse me, Canada's got talent. Yeah. Canada's got talent. Mm -hmm. About to start shooting again. Yeah. And then what's happening with the music? Are we going are you, are you on the road constantly? Basically? Dude, I have been on the road constantly. I feel like I've been on the road other than COVID constantly for the past ten years. Like yeah. it is the the place that makes me the most happy. But um but yeah, this this summer we were on the road with Little Big Town. We were touring with Blake Shelton last year, and then we just finished um, a month in Europe. I was in Germany and then opening up for the Cadillac three in the UK and then in Australia for a few weeks. And so it's been an incredible year so far. We have like a few more festivals. And of course, shooting Canada's Got Talent. But then I'm home in the studio, and I'm so excited. Who are you going in the studio with? Right now, I'm just working with a bunch of writers that I love and, like, creating. And I'm, like, honing in my next record. And so right now, it's in it's in the experimenting stages. Exper is of, that like, the best phase of the record? It is when totally it's like, the best. What are we going to do? Yeah, and it's, like, for once, I am really just trying to make music that's inspiring me. I think I've always been trying to... Um, at least for the past couple of years, like coming out of COVID, I think I've been always trying to, okay, the music needs to f f fall in this certain lane and it needs to be this and it needs to have this and it needs to say this. And I'm just like, no, like my favorite artists are artists that march to the beat of their own drum. And I'm like, if I continue to try to walk in this lane that isn't me, it's just going to take me further and further away from my heart and my integrity and what I want to say and what... The artists that I truly look up to are, you know, muses of. And so right now I'm just like creating exactly what makes me happy. I'm like a kid in a candy store every single day. In the studio. Yeah. I feel like, do you consider yourself, like when you really think about it, like I think you've been marketed as a country artist, but mm -hmm. do you feel like you're a country artist? Or do you, like Corey Wong on his podcast, he was like, I think Lindsay is just a pop artist. Yeah. Do you kind of feel that way just internally? Yeah, I, I feel like great music and great artists transcends or yeah transcends and it's not about the genre lines you know i understand that it, as a marketing department you sometimes need specifics of how to market something but when i look at my favorite artists like john mayer and cheryl crow and tom petty like yeah you can see what charts their songs have had success on that are maybe in genre categories but they transcend those lines you know it's it's the mosaic of everything that comes together like the way they sing the way they play their instruments those songs they write the way they perform them that make them who they are and nobody else touches that space because right. it's so unique and that's what i'm focusing on right now and so yeah if anything i i wouldn't necessarily like branded as one thing i'm just trying to make music that feels authentic to me and then finding the right places to market it and if it lies in country great if it lies outside of country great i think music is just meant to be enjoyed and and when it comes from that place of inspiration within an artist or when an artist sings it from that place i think it feels authentic to an audience and when it doesn't i think that also feels weird to an audience and an audience can pick it up if an artist isn't being true to themselves yeah so when you go into the studio to start working on this new album, mm -hmm. first of all, are you like, or do you go into an actual studio or do you go into like a writer's room or like a friend's home studio? All or like of the above. All of the above. All Isn't the it above. kind of expensive though to go into like a big studio just to kind of mess around and, and kind of see what you're going to do? Yeah. Or is it worth it because it, the vibe is just so good? It is expensive, but everything is expensive, everything you know? Is expensive. And it's like, it is worth it 
the money to invest in yourself. And sometimes with the right people, when you feel the moment is right, you need to do the thing in order to figure out if it's the right thing. Like you but can't to, yeah. always like observe it from the writer's room only and be like, okay, I think this is something. Like sometimes you just need to go into the studio and record a few songs. And sometimes they're going to be awesome and it's going to be exactly what you need. And sometimes it's not. And it's okay. Right. Every single artist, all of my friends who are artists have gone into – studios and recorded projects i mean i recorded a bunch of songs last year that i'm probably never ever gonna release which is crazy at at one point and also at the other end of the spectrum it's just part of the process you know you need to create and you need to create at a point of failing is okay because if you're so scared of spending money to the point where okay this needs to be the next thing this needs to be the song that's going to change my life this like i have created from from a place like that for a while years ago and it's just like it's so stifling creatively so you need to be okay to, that if it's not going to work out right and but, oh yeah, yeah and then it's like happy accidents when it does but when you go into the studio is that they're normally like hey we're, we're going to go into the studio and we're going to try to record these four or five songs or will you ever book studio time and go into the studio and have absolute and have nothing and say well, we're going to figure it out on the studio floor because to me that sounds expensive Okay, that is expensive. And I know a lot of my friends who have done that. Who do that. Um, you know, like I, I, I know like that's how John Mayer records a lot. And it's just like, man, that's so wild to me. Like right. like t- taking a studio for four months or something and being like, all right, I'm going to write my next record in this point. Like I prefer to craft in a writer's room and craft with my friends and collab and, and spend a lot of time by myself and like figure out what I want to say and how I want to say it and start things. And, and I have a studio in my house that I spend a lot of time in. And, um, and so I prefer to craft at least the start of things. And then the studio is where you explore those ideas. You know, like I would feel weird walking into a studio with nothing. Cause I'm like, okay, uh, where do we start? I, I prefer to at least come with ideas. And then it's like the, the egg has already been cracked, you know, then you can like dive in and, and really see what's there. Right, right, right. Do you live in an apartment or, or, or a house? I live in a house now. House. You used to live in a, an apartment, right? All the time. And I, my poor neighbors. That's like, what I was going to ask. My poor neighbors. Poor neighbors, right? I, it's just like, there's no other way. And I mean, thankfully living in Music City, it kind of comes with a territory. Like if you do live here, it's like, you're probably going to be living next to or close to Someone somebody in the music industry. And, yeah, and, and either they're like a yeah. producer or a drummer or a guitar player yeah. or something. And so it's kind of like the apropos of living here, which is nice. But also my poor neighbors, I'm just so grateful for them. I, I do remember they were so patient with me because um, my last house, I was sharing walls. And I I decided to do a 24-hour live stream when um, my last record, Heart Theory, came yeah. out. Because I have these crazy ideas sometimes, and um, I I bust on Broadway at when my single "By the Way" like years ago came out, and I busked on Broadway for twenty four hours straight. It was like insane. I I'd like, I thought it was gonna be fine, but by hour twenty four, I like barely had a voice left. Because you know, no human is supposed to sing for twenty four hours straight. Right, right, right. But um, but sounds sexy at I, first. Sounds, sounds sexy. Sounds yeah, like a great exactly. idea. The label then... loved the marketing idea, and yeah, then when yeah. I was actually like, what have I signed oh. up for? <laughs> But I decided to do the crazy thing again because I'm just insane. Yeah. And um, it's your thing. Yeah. And and in the middle of of the pandemic, it's like we had all of this stuff planned for my album release, and we couldn't do any of it because we were all locked in our houses. And yeah. so, thankfully, my band and I had quarantined a lot together. And um, and so I decided to do this 24 hour live stream. And I had. I had guests who would come on like Instagram live with me from all over the yeah, world. You had from great guests on every time zone around the world. Yeah. And um, but it meant that like it. 3 a.m. And every hour I would play like a few songs. I'd, I'd bring on a guest. I'd talk or whatever. And um, so at like 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., I was playing music in my house because I had to because yeah. it, it was, was the was thing, the thing I signed up for. And my neighbor was not happy. I remember she called. She like came and knocked on the door and she was like, I have a meeting tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Yeah, and my did. boss is not going to be okay with me not being well slept. And I was like, oh. So we ended up like going outside. We like went downtown. Is this, this is happening live. This on, is happening so live. You're, so you're having to deal with this live. Live. With thousands of people. Yeah, we watching. heard like the knock below and my manager talking to my neighbor, and I was like, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? Oh my but, god. You know, it's part par for the course for this. This happens stream. to me too. Sometimes my neighbors 
will knock on my door. Really? Yeah. And, uh, you know, you know what normally happens is sometimes I just kind of ignore them and then yeah. sometimes they just kind of go away. Right. Yeah. Right. But what's funny is my next door neighbor, so the neighbor on my left side mm-hmm. always complains and knocks on my door and it's like, you know, it's Do they thing. listen to your podcast? I don't know if they okay. do. No, no <laughs> screw them. I don't, I don't care. And then the neighbor on the other side always blasts really loud hip hop. Oh, great. And no, no, no. Because whenever they blast oh. hip hop, I get really pissed off. And I go like bang on their door and I tell them to shut up. But then I'm I'm completely not empathetic at all. Like when my neighbor over here makes a lot of noise, I get yeah. really pissed. And when I make a lot of noise, I get mad at the neighbor yelling at me. Yeah, see, you can't do I that. I can't win. When your neighbor blasts loud hip hop music, you should be like, Yeah, dude, I see you. I, I see you. You blast your music because I'm, I'm gonna be blasting my that's music what later. I, that's what I should do, but yeah. I just naturally am not in that state. Like right. my natural reaction is, is different. It's just anger. It's just it's just <laughs> anger. But normally in my Got defense, it. they normally do it like late at night when I'm trying to sleep. Okay, that's not cool. That's that's not cool, right? Yeah. That's not cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to ask you, mm-hmm. I feel like you collaborate with a lot of international people. Mm-hmm. Like when you were in Australia, you brought out Kaylee Bell. Yeah. And you did a song with her that you wrote over the pandemic. Do you think that sometimes people in Nashville get so stuck into writing with who is geographically close to them? And are people missing out by not writing with people in Australia and the UK and Yeah, I think it over? was it was one of the um, silver linings around the pandemic is you got to collaborate with people anywhere because it didn't matter you know you could be it could be your next door neighbor you're zooming with or it could be somebody in australia or in the uk and um before like writing songs on zoom was not really a thing we did as songwriters because we were like oh we'll just wait till we're in the same room but when it was left that that was the only option um i think we just were really encouraged to do more of it and it helped me you know, collaborate with even artists that were like, yeah, next time I'm in Australia, we should do something. And all of a sudden it was like, okay, let's do something next Tuesday. And so, yeah, Kaylee and I have always wanted to do a song together. I was writing with so many producers and writer friends of mine from the UK and from Germany and, um, and a few other artists from Australia. And so Kaylee and I recorded this song completely on opposite sides of the world. And also recorded the music video she like recorded her portion of the music video and wore this like suit the song's called living free so she found the suit with like a whole bunch of hundred dollar bills on it or whatever and then mailed me the suit uh, oh my so God. i could wear the same suit in the music video and then i shot my portion of the i music haven't seen video, this music video I, I need and to then watch we this. edited it together <laughs> I need to watch this. Oh, my God. So it's just cool. It's amazing what you can do when you really lean into technology. Like, the world just becomes such a small place. Yeah. Do you think, like, oftentimes people in Australia or the U.K. will send me these country songs, Mm -hmm. and they go, I've got the next big country song, and I listen to it, and I go, that's not quite what's coming out of Nashville, or that Mm -hmm. doesn't, that's not quite it. It's it's very different. Even though it sounds like it should be similar, it's very different. Like, do you find that when you write with someone in Australia or the U.K., does are they is there are their country sensibilities different? Yes, the, it is right. Very much so, and it I think it always should. You know, yeah. I think that it's part of like a country having their own flair, and and you know it would be unfair to think that producers in Nashville are going to sound the same as producers in Australia or Canada or the UK or even LA, you know, like every epicenter of creatives has its own vibe. And I think also that's what makes it so special. And when you get to collaborate with producers from a completely different country, I also think that's what makes a song so unique is because you get to kind of blend all of your tastes together. Yeah, right. I think it's a cool thing. I think it's cool. Okay, the last record, Heart Theory. Mm -hmm. First of all, we need like a lot more music from Lindsay. We need like we need another album. She's going in the studio right now. Yeah, she's she's going in in. the makes, guys. Here's what I want to ask about Heart Theory, and I'm ready to ask this question, and for you to give me the answer, and I'm going to say, oh yeah, right. Okay. But this last record, Heart Theory, was about the seven stages of grief. Each Mm -hmm. song represented a different stage, Mm -hmm. right? But there were twelve songs on the record. Yeah. What were the? Because I listened to this record and I try to figure out. What was what? What 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 was which? I, I kind of think I know, but there's like five songs that don't have a stage of grief associated to them. Yeah, I mean sometimes stages of grief, like everybody experiences them in different ways, and sometimes they take a little bit longer than one song. You know, so oh, is that what it is? That's, yeah, so you have some of like, the stages were passing over into different songs. Exactly. So you have like "Hits Me" is the first song on the yeah. record, and it's shock, and then you have like "I Don't Love You," and that's denial, and then you have you know there's there's anger and there's depression and those have a couple songs each and then there's bargaining bargaining is a very complicated thing that's body language of a breakup um and then you know you you 
go in, like all the way, finally, you end up in a place of acceptance. And so it's part of the journey of it. And because I'm like, okay, well, my album's going to be definitely longer than seven songs. But this is what it was about. And I wanted the record to really sound like a musical diary so I could listen to the songs top to bottom or anybody could listen to the songs top to bottom and hear me like slowly unravel, go through my process and know that we are all going through our own processes, whatever we're experiencing in life, you know, and, and constantly going through our own processes. You know, it's not just like you do this once and you're like, okay, I'm good. Like we're, we're constantly being um, questioned and, and being challenged and going through, you know, breakups and losing jobs and moving across the country and going through global pandemics and whatever it may be like we're constantly being challenged in life. And um, I just think it's like a beautiful process to, to surrender to and know that you're going to finally end in that place of acceptance where you can look back and be grateful for everything that has fallen in your path and, and made you who you are. Yeah, right. Is the next are there, is there another concept for record that you want to do or does it come to you in the creation process? Like, do you have any like, idea? It does. I have so many ideas of like yeah. records that I want to make. I love concept albums. I think they're so fun and they flourish like a whole new brand what do you of think creativity. Is the best con do you, like, what's a favorite concept album? Oh my gosh, that's such a good question. Um, yeah, I mean, gosh, of like, like one of my favorite concept albums that I made is when I recorded John Mayer's Continuum. Is that a concept album? I guess Continuum? I don't know. That's more of like a cover album. I guess Hard yeah. Theory is more of a concept album because it was there's, on the seventh. There's a concept eight. there. Yeah. yeah, I guess when Lady Gaga did. Um, Joe Lane. That's kind of a concept That's album. That's totally right? a concept album. Yeah. And it was like so different than what she did yeah. um, before on any other project. And so I just think it's cool. It's also cool for fans to see like different sides of you, you know, so they can learn all of the dimensions that, that go into making you you. Again, like not checking that I am only country music and I only do these things. Like I think true artists have so many different dimensions to their personality. Yeah, right. Okay, so Lindsay's going back into the studio. Mm -hmm. There's a new record coming. Yep. I'm ready for new Lindsay L music. I'm so ready, dude. Ooh. I will have one song out in a few weeks. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, Let the Words Come Out is right now. But I will have an album next year, I can promise you. I can't believe how tight you are with your band. Didn't your band drive down to Louisiana with you to get to get your puppy? Yeah. I See, I feel like I go on the road with my band, and when yeah. I'm not on the road with them, I don't want to see them You're at like, all. You're like, peace out? I'm like, I, I, see, I see you all the time. I don't want to spend any time with you. I know. Sounds I, like you guys are hanging out. I've been so lucky to have, like, the best bandmates for for years and years. And even throughout COVID, my band changed a lot. You yeah. know, as, as um, my bass player started his own nonprofit in town, and um, my guitar player wanted to just be a producer, and my front of house had a baby, and like all these things, so these like, life whoa, things. We need, we need a band. Who? Yeah. How long has your guitar player been with you? Recently, or is he? Uh, this guitar player that you saw me play with in Australia has been pretty recent. Holy but... cow! That guy is an incredible musician. He's amazing. And he plays keys too, and he sounds He's like so Billy Joel. He was yeah. unbelievable. He went to college like for. Oh, he like... went. He he went to college. <laughs> I mean, he has like studied piano. He's like this stu yeah, a that different dude was level. Unreal on the keys. He's insane. Oh my god. He's so so talented. But yeah, so when I wanted to adopt a dog i've always i love dogs i've grown up with them and i always thought i traveled too much to get a dog but um shortly in covid i was just over living alone within four walls by myself and i was like i need a dog man but i wanted to rescue a dog of course and so i found this dog in new orleans that i loved fall, fell in love with and i was just gonna get in my car and go pick her up and um eric and austin my bandmates at the time were like you are not going by yourself and so we literally got in the car Drove seven hours down to New Orleans, picked up a po' boy, a beignet, and a dog, and then got in the car, turned around, and came back. And uh, and it was you didn't get sick of spending time with the band. No, no, we these love are, you love these, together. Yeah, I can't understand it, and I, I love is, my band too. I love yeah. the guys in Temecula Road. They're not my band. I love hanging out with them, but. I, I just get sick of anyone. I don't like spending I'm, that much time with anyone. I'm so careful when I do hire somebody as a part of my band. Like it is, yes, how they can play, but it is also those. Other 23 hours of the day, you know? That's and a, That's all it is. Yeah, and hanging in the front lounge of the bus. Like, it's all about that hang and, and people who will go, you know, deep with you and will want to talk about life. Like, I'm not the let's have a million shots party bus. Like, that's just not my vibe. Yeah. I'm more the, like... Let's talk about feelings. How's your heart doing? <laughs> That's the... But it builds this like bond between you that is like inseparable. And, yeah. You know, you want everybody to be the best versions of themselves and be the best like husbands and wives and girlfriends and boyfriends and mothers and fathers that they that they can be. 
Right, right, right. And and the dog's name is Hendrix. How, yeah. how, why'd you find this dog? How'd you, what kind of dog is um, it? Hendrix named after my favorite guitar player, Jimi Hendrix, of course. Um, naturally. Naturally. And I just, I, I wanted a small dog for sure because I travel so much and I knew um, if I was ever going to bring her on the bus, having a small dog small is, dog has is to important. Be. But, um, but, but yeah, I, I've just always wanted to rescue a dog. I think rescuing animals, adopt, don't shop is one of the coolest things that, that you can do. And so I was, I was just looking for the right one and I knew that my heart would feel it. And I had been looking for days and days and days and I would find a dog and I was like, okay, maybe they're available. And then I would email them and they're like, it just got adopted yesterday. And, and I had, I had looked for just days and days and spent like eight hours a day just looking for the right dog. And eventually I like gave up. I was like, okay, it's just not time. It's just not the right time. And so I, I like shut my computer and I was like, all right, if, if, it is the time. Please send the right dog my way. I like literally said that out loud. And 20 minutes later, this girl from this shelter in New Orleans, who I had messaged her about another dog a few days before, had sent me the... pictures of Hendrix. And she was like, hey, we just got this little girl in. Her name, or, or she's like a tiny little fox. Would you like to adopt her? And I was like, she's perfect. I will drive down right now. So Gathered the band, drove down, and, and got the dog. Yeah. This is cute. I, I've wanted a dog for a long time. but You I, should get one. I feel like there's so much work, and I travel a lot. They are a you, lot of work. You're the boss. You, you, well, you go, I mean, dog comes with me. True, 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 true. It's easier when I can bring the dog on the bus. It's easier when. But, you know, maybe talk to your peeps. They might let you. Here's the problem. Like, I'm the kind of person who, like, I never like to ask anyone yeah. to do anything because then I okay, feel like. Okay, you should like, not get a dog. <laughs> then I feel like, like, I don't ask anyone to drive me to the airport because yeah. then I feel like they're going to ask me to pick them up from You're the airport. You're going to need to ask all your friends to take care of your dog. <laughs> I, and I don't want I don't want them to have to to feel like yeah. I owe them. Totally, totally. I that's, get it. That's not what I want. I get it. Um, So I just don't think I'm going to get one. But I do feel like, I, come on, having a dog for, like, like, like do you feel just, like, happier Having a dog yes. in the house, right? There See, is a I chemical. A dog. There's a chemical reaction to having a effect. dog. When you pet a dog, when you hold and cuddle I mean with dog. your dog, there yeah. is literally a chemical dopamine effect in your brain. Yeah, it's literally science. It's science. It's it's literally science. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, Lindsay Ellis here. I think we should call someone. Should we call someone? Oh my gosh, I'm kind of nervous, but sure. We're calling wait, wait. from your phone, not mine. Hang on. What if we called Allie? Should we call Allie? Oh my gosh, we could call Allie. Let's call Allie. She's Let's see. Let's see if she says okay. anything entertaining for this podcast. Okay. Here we okay. go. Let's see if she even picks up. Do we oh wow! Speakerphone. Yeah. 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 Oh, do you hear that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You need to tell her that she's on a podcast. Yeah. I think yeah. This yeah. Is the yeah, ropes. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're like, I got this. Yeah. 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 I, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know all about the legal jargon. I don't think she's gonna pick up. Let's just leave her a message. We'll leave her a message. Okay. Yeah. She's busy, you know? She's a busy she's woman. A boss. She's not going to pick up the phone. She's a badass. She's not going to pick up. This is okay. disappointing. Hey, you've reached Allie. Oh, there we go. Send me a text what, are, what are we going to say? A message, we're just going to tell her how much we love her. We're going to tell her how much we love her. We're going to say. At the tone, please record your message. I'm glad her thing wasn't didn't recite her number. Yeah, right. That would have been weird. That would have Allie, Allie. It's, it's Zach and Lindsay on the podcast. You're gonna, you're gonna, you know, slap yourself when you realize you missed the opportunity <laughs> to be on air with us. Or maybe she'll be really grateful. <laughs> or you might be really grateful. We miss you so much, and we love you, Allie. And it's it's Lindsay and Zach. We love you. We love you, and your voicemail will forever be a part of this episode. Yes. So we love you. Okay, we're okay, we're done. We'll bye. see if she calls. Um, Lindsay L. She's on a new show. It's on a new show. It's season number three. Canada's Got Talent. You need to go watch it. Yeah. The new show as well on PBS, American Anthems. Yes. And this is already out, but you can go to PBS.com yep. and you can watch this for free. PBS.org, I think. I'm sorry. And you can it's watch PBS. it for free. PBS.org. I think. Yeah. I don't, I don't know, but I think. No, no, I watched it for free. Okay, you yeah. go and you watch it. Go watch. The episodes it's really are amazing. Moving. It's so really moving. It's really touching. Yeah. Yes. And Heart Theory, the last record. Thank you. Which is, has 12 stages of grief on mm-hmm. it. There's an extra five stages. Extra five stages. It's unbelievable. It's, it's brain And then, and, and she's on the road. Yeah. Are you playing America? Yeah, all the time. All the time. This you, is my home, baby. You need to follow up. Here's the other thing I wanted to ask you. Yeah. Oh, it's not um, Allie. I thought okay. it was someone else. I'm so like, wow. we're, I'm like, wow. Here's what, we had Brian Kelly on the podcast. Amazing. And he was giving really good advice about how to DM people. 
Okay. He must get a lot of crazy DMs, right? I'm I'm sure he does. No, but I'm you sure must get does. a lot of DMs. Oh, also, do I? Right? Yeah, I I do get a lot of crazy DMs. Do you get a lot of creepy people DMing yes, you? A yes. Yes, right. Yeah. What's the best way to DM someone? Is there a way? Uh, it depends what you want, like what your intention. Like, are you trying to get a date? Maybe. Is okay. there any way that a fan could DM Lindsay and create a relationship with them, or is it really hard? Yeah, I have, I have I DM with fans all the time. And really? Yeah, I love being able to like one on one talk to them. Um, but do you become friendly with any of these people, or is it hard to become? There are a lot of fans, especially super fans who've been to so many shows that yeah, I, yeah that I DM all the time. I have like good relationships with. Um, okay, if you're trying to, okay, Zach, if you were going to DM somebody to try to pick somebody up, yeah, I uh, would give the, you the advice. What's of, the advice? Give me the advice here, Lindsay. I mean, this for is me, good. it is always comedic. Like it's Comedy. always, yeah, it's always like that clever one-liner that like compliments them on something that isn't creepy. Really? Do not be creepy. This is so hard because but, I feel like, like, it, like I always try to go almost dry like hey, yeah. like like let's get coffees or like hey, we should get drinks sometime or something. Yeah, that's but that's, that sucks. No. Yeah, it's not good. What is funny? It's boring. I don't know what I can't even be funny. Well, what is like? How do you say what's funny? Oh my gosh! I mean, it it would like you need to go to their page and you need to do some research. You need to do some some stalking, some Instagram diving, and then you you find you know like um, I don't know maybe they have like a little dog or something. And then you like crack a little joke about the dog, or like send a smiley face. Like you make it, you make just a, a nice, sweet gesture that will make them smile. That's how you. And but what if you already know the person? Then it's like, okay, if you already know the person, then should you be asking them out? <laughs> no, probably not. I mean, maybe if you already know the person, then you should know a lot about them. So then there should be so to, much like, to be funny about. Yeah. Yeah, and it just it's like don't make it creepy funny. I'm never not... funny. I never know what to write that's funny. Like I feel like when I'm on like dating apps or whatever, I never yeah. know good opening lines. I'm always like, hey, I don't know, it's not good. Doesn't that suck though? I mean, okay, what it do you doesn't think is a good all... opening line on like a dating app? It doesn't necessarily have to be funny. It, it but it, it does. It should be like clever, clever or like sweet or like something more than just hey, want to go for coffee? Because like that's that's not fun. so boring. Yeah, right? so boring. So Ugh. boring. This is informative, actually. Yeah. Brian said the best thing to do is to meet people IRL. He was like, don't DM anyone. Yeah. It's like, meet them in a supermarket. Yeah. That, that's what he yeah. said. That yeah. is that is totally the best. But sometimes in, a, in an age like technology, it it's is. It's really hard, right? It's hard. Like, so many of my friends have met Are you their seeing anyone right now? Can I ask? Mates. Is this private? Uh, it is private. Private. But... We'll keep it private. <laughs> keep it private. That sounds like yes. That <laughs> is maybe. Maybe. But, um, but. Uh, so many of my friends have met their like husbands and wives off of dating websites. So yeah. I an app. So I actually don't like bash them at all. I no. just say you have to like be picky about like what you want, and and when you find something awesome, then just be clever. You know, clever. You need to be clever. Yeah. Easy for a songwriter to say. Yeah, but it, it can be easy things. Like okay, if I saw your picture, I'd be like. Your blue glasses are amazing. Is like, that clever? What is it, that? I mean, I don't know. Or like, the, that's what you would say. Blue that's... glasses are my favorite kind of glasses. Like, I, it doesn't need to be. That's that not funny. That sounds more clever, but okay. but not your blue glass. I guess is that is I that what's gonna I don't work? No, this is like off the top of my head. So I'm like, I'm I just. We're... But you like scroll through their pictures yeah, and then yeah, yeah. like find something that it clearly shows that they like, and then you like, you know, you go off that. That's, That's your content. The, you need context. Yeah. The yeah, yeah, point yeah. is, don't go in cold just DMing exactly. people random. You need don't context. Don't ask them for coffee. Don't ask them for coffee. <laughs> yeah. That's the, that is so boring. It's so that is, boring. That is never going to work. No. Context. Yes. We've learned a lot here from okay. Lindsay. Amazing. This has been fantastic. <laughs> um, Lindsay, the, 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 the special, the publicist was like, we need to plug the special. Yeah. This is, everyone needs to go watch this seriously. Yeah. It's so, It's actually so really touching. It's 22 minutes. It really is. It's really short. And it bangs like a whole, like it's, the whole series is actually great. The episode with Jennifer Nettles was really great. It's so amazing. Yeah, the whole series the whole, is awesome. And go listen to Let the Words Comes Out. And You have to listen to it. Yeah. It's really, you and Christian Bush on mm -hmm. this. That's a good combo. I feel like you guys, I like seeing you guys create. There's like a moment there where you guys are creating the song together. Thank you. And he's kind of like, yep, that's it. And he, like when you talk to him, he's just like so wise seeming, right? Is, yeah. It's unbelievable. He's, he's amazing to write with. Oh, this is really great. Everyone needs to go watch it. Yeah. Lindsay L. in the studio. Thanks for coming by. What have we Thanks left out? So much, Has anything Zach. been on set? This is amazing. I love your setup. You have like 
the coolest setup and lights and cameras. Like, Zach, you've got it going on. I'm proud of you. I'm trying. I'm proud of Lindsay. <laughs> How often do you practice guitar? All the time? Yeah, I try. Do you have a, a thing at this point where they you like a routine? Like, I don't I never know what to practice anymore. Like, Not I'm, really. I just play music that I like. I play along with music that, that I love. That's that inspires kind of the me. thing. I yeah. got the Corey Wong course, actually. Nice. I paid for it. Amazing. And you know what? The first lesson in the course, I yeah. haven't gotten past it. Okay. No, 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 but not. Well, that's great. But not because I'm not, not because I'm not doing it. Because the first lesson is yeah. so hard, and I want to kind of like perfect it before I go to the that next is lesson. By the time you finish that course, you are going to be like a better guitar player. So much. That's what they're meant for. Has anyone ever approached you like True Fire or any of these? Has, has any of these companies ever approached you to do a guitar course? I feel like yeah, you do a great I guitar course. I do have course. a guitar course actually. Do you? If you go on like my Instagram link tree or whatever the the link in my page, um, I did do a little like beginner intermediate guitar course. Yeah. I just like. I start from like very, very beginner because I had a lot of fans being like, Lindsay, you've inspired me to start playing guitar. I so, bet you inspire a ton of people to play guitar. So I did like beginner, beginner, and then I did like intermediate of like some of the crazy concepts that I wrap my head around and that open up my, you know, muso brain on guitar playing. What so. do you think that is? Like, is it like the cage system or like, is there, was there like cage a moment that really worked it. for you? Um, like Nashville number system is part of it. Like even just like uh, studying patterns in certain boxes and then developing on that so yeah if you if you are interested go check it out where how, how, how do people check that um just go to just my instagram page instagram and page. like the link in my bio and I'd, then I'd, it'll I'd, see like guitar lessons with me or play I'd, guitar I'd with this, me. Is a, this is a good course i bet so, Lindsay yeah. L guitar course all right <laughs> Lindsay on the studio thanks for coming by thanks we'll Zach. see you guys next time